Hey guys, I'm Janet it's on occasion, and today we are kicking off a brand new campaign with Oxyotl of the uh, Silence and the Fury DLC fame. Uh, so this is still in development. Obviously, it says so in the bottom right corner, if you ever forget. I think it also probably says subscribe to Janet's channel or something. You can do that too. Um, anyway, so we're going to be playing as Oxyotl, and he's got some awesome campaign mechanics. I absolutely love it. This is one of the best campaigns I've played uh, in Total War Warhammer 2. I think every DLC just keeps bringing new mechanics that I love more. Mostly, it's the story stuff that I really love. It's the RPG stuff, it's the world building stuff, and that's all here. So, his faction effects here. So, his unique mechanics are silent sanctums, unlock long lost sanctums in any visible region to grant Oxyotl local bonuses and secure, uh, sorry, and secret visibility. Also, he has visions of the old ones, so this is like a system of quests that he has. So, receive missions to thwart chaos activity around the world in return for blessed spawnings and other rewards. I'm going to say the blessed spawnings on top of the already incredibly diverse roster that uh, Oxyotl has, like, from the get-go. It means that you just have the most uh, amazingly flexible forces. It's really cool. Also, suitable climates all. You can pretty much empire build wherever you like. Whatever you want to set up shop is all good, which is really fun, really unique. Uh, though, he will be very busy. He will be kept very busy, so empire building is a little bit difficult. It's a little bit difficult for him. He's got a lot to do. Very busy boy. So, upkeep minus 25% for skink and chameleon skink units, faction-wide, which is lovely. So, really nice. You know, get all the cheap stuff in. Uh, well, for cheap, basically. Really helps. Really helps while he's jet-setting to have some people at home helping out. So, additional 1% speed and missile damage per experience rank of all skink infantry. This adds up rather nicely. I mean, extra 9% speed is pretty good, isn't it? When they're at top rank. An extra 9% missile damage, it really helps. Also, plus 1 melee attack, melee defense, and leadership per experience rank of all skink infantry. I mean, that's an extra 9 melee attack. These are not small bonuses, you know? Uh, that's additional. They get small stat bonuses from ranking up anyway, so... You just end up with some really, like, madly elite skink units, which is a weird thing to say, but uh, it applies here. So, Lord Effect, immune to diplomatic penalties from trespassing. This is a necessity, because he will be jet-setting all around the world, and I also love the fact that he he's sneaky, isn't he? He's very sneaky. He knows how to get into these secret places, um, and he's a good ambusher. In fact, a very good ambusher. A masterful ambusher, one might say. So he has access to the masterful ambush stance, requiring less movement range to adopt, and with a reduced detection chance. So, same thing as the Wood Elves have, which is really cool. Also, armor-piercing missile damage, plus 50% for all skink infantry units in his army. So, you know, chameleon skinks is going to be the skink... Um, uh, you know, the skink cohort with javelins, all of that. So fantastic. Really good to get some extra armor piercing on those very cheap units. You know, really good for taking down big monsters. So love that. Or or just armored infantry, you know, it all helps. Also experience gain for units plus 200% when fighting against Beastmen, Chaos, and Norska. I will guarantee we're going to be fighting a lot of all three of those. His army is going to get experience real quick. And speaking of his army, he starts with Chameleon Stalkers. So this is a new unit. Uh, I love him. I love them. They're a really fun addition. I was I was really disappointed when I saw the original uh, teaser trailer for this and assumed they would just be yet another tier of Skink Skirmisher, but they're not. They're really fun, and we'll get to that. So I can play hard, hard, and legendary. So, you know, some challenge, but I don't have to get bogged down too much with public order penalties or, you know, enemies with infinite leadership or any of that nonsense. Now nah, we'll just be able to, you know, hopefully... Hopefully progress nice and quick, see the sights, enjoy the variety, and uh, then prepare for a massive chaos invasion at the end of the campaign. Should be a lot of fun. Let's get to it. You have travelled far, Oxyotl, but you are no stranger to great and perilous journeys. The Norskan tribe you have been pursuing has managed to push past the Dark Elf Towers and threatens to move further south. The fate of the nearby Nagarothi is of little concern, but all vestiges of chaos in these lands must be eradicated nonetheless. For it is said that wherever the dark gods have worshippers, they also have eyes. Once these misguided warm bloods have been dealt with, you will be well positioned to infiltrate the Norskun heartland. With the Northmen's attentions occupied with warmongering southward, they will not expect your approach. For too long, they have been allowed to worship their ruinous idols, 
Oblivion awaits those who seek the gaze of the Chaos Gods. The world is an increasingly dark place, Oxyodl. But you are the one who hunts unseen. Cleanse the corruption one threat at a time. And may the blessings of the Old Ones continue to guide you. Fantastic. So um, this is the Ghost of Parhawks, by the way. I, I checked. Uh, I always used to say Parho. But it's Parhawks. I checked the Lizardman book. This one is actually a, a, a hard X, which is, a, you know, sort of CKS kind of pronunciation. Um, just just in case you wanted to know. Also, one thing about pronunciation is uh, this old man here. He said Oxyotl and Oxyotl. He said Otl and Otl. So not even this guy knows knows what's going on. So yeah, just hedging his bets. So visions of the old ones. Uh, yeah, don't worry. We'll get to this. We'll get to it. Unlock a hidden sanctum. That's mission one. So, though the old ones are long dead, their ancient power still beats through the veins of this world. During his long absence, Oxyotl's kin have forgotten how to wield it, but he remembers still. Once he has reawakened a silent sanctum, the foul creatures of chaos shall not evade his sight. So, up here you can see this is our secret sanctum uh, unlocker Tron, and you can see these little pips on the outside. We're going to need sacred gems. We're going to get sacred gems as rewards for doing things. And that's going to fill up this gauge. And then we'll get a, uh, a secret sanctum unlocked. And that's going to give us a little icon like this. We have a sanctum here. They work a lot like Undercities, so you can see down the bottom. Now I'm looking at my uh, secret sanctum buildings. There's some really nice ones. So uh, this capstone of uh, Shoka that we have equipped already. This will lower upkeep for nearby units, which I am going to take advantage of now, I reckon. And uh, there's also a bunch of other things we can build. So we've got uh, recruitment cost down and global recruitment duration down for local armies. We've got uh, extra casualty replenishment rate and vigor loss reduction. Um, this one gives us... Oh, that is the one we've just looked at. Uh, this one I think is my favourite, and we will be building a ton of these around the world. There's a 25% chance a Sanctum Patrol will ambush enemy armies in the local region. So remember, we can build these Sanctums whatever we like, as long as we've seen... The settlement, we can go, okay, one there, please, and just instantly do it. We don't need to send an agent to it. We literally just click on this button, which isn't active yet because we don't have any unlocked. And then we click on a, you know, a click on a, a settlement that we can see and click build sanctum. And it's just there immediately. Um, so the idea of being able to have a 25% a chance, and when you upgrade it, a 33% chance, a one in three chance of any enemy walking across that territory and then having to fight an ambush, which we get to control. Which is awesome, if we want, or we can just auto-resolve it. But if we win those battles, it's free money, and it really hinders our enemies. It's fantastic. Uh, also, the capstone of Tepok is going to be incredibly important later on. So this actually lets us build a sort of a node to teleport to. And we can only have one of these at a time. We can always teleport to our capital, and then anywhere that we have a capstone of Tepok, and also anywhere where we have an active mission. And here are the visions of the old ones. So here, destroy faction is our mission. So the dead worship no one. You have tracked the crag warmbloods for some time, having envisioned their destiny to commit the vilest of atrocities in an affront to the great plan. By swearing their unholy allegiance to the dark gods, they have signed their own death warrants. Finish the task at hand and deal the final blow. So this will, uh, basically, we, we defeat crag, which is the guys that are around us right now we defeat them we get eight sanctum gems which is actually as many as you need to build a sanctum which is rather convenient and it'll also give us new visions of the old ones and if you fail we'll get new visions of the old ones this is the tutorial mission you know it's fine but uh yeah we can travel if we click travel this will immediately teleport oxyotl to the location of the quest of course we are already here so it doesn't matter but uh these quests they could be anywhere around the world so the whole Mortal Empires campaign map is at our disposal. We might get missions like way down here, you know, up against uh, Queek, for all we know, or against Skrulk, or against someone who's not a Skaven. But, you know, there might be uh, Kazrak will fight in, in Talaya or something. You just don't know. You don't know what missions you're going to get. It's always random, but it's always trying to thwart chaos, which is really cool. So a lot of, uh, a lot of fun. Speaking of a lot of fun, we don't just have Oxyotl. We start with an Oracle. We start with an oracle, so we have a troglodon from the get-go, which is awesome. 
Just really awesome. I absolutely adore it. Also, great choice of units here. Like, every Skig unit. It's so good. So you get such variety uh, right from the beginning. And we can also get a Skink Chief as well. So I'm going to get Skink Chief as quickly as possible. Uh, I mean, Humble would be nice if we could recruit anyone else, but that's not going to work. For, we're not going to be doing that for years. So I think these are all a bit rubbish. These are all a bit rubbish, honestly. These these are not good. Maybe I will get Humble. I can, I can do without the other two, if I'm honest. So let's get Humble, and one day we may end up recruiting someone, and that might benefit them. So, Baskin, at some point, you are going to head to Oxyotl's army. Until then, though, let's get Oxyotl busy, shall we? So, here you can see immediately we do have these, uh, essentially, banners. Um, you know, they work like banners, but they're different ammo types that we can give to people. So this fire blood toxin imbued with a bloodthirster's crushed horn, the already explosive blood of a fire leech, gains horrifying sentience, clinging to armor until it burns the flesh underneath, which is creepy and horrible and gross, and I hate it, but it's armor sundering attacks, and that is a big deal. So flaming armor sundering attacks for our chameleon skinks. Also, we have the toad skin essence. So Slaneshi demons are masters of illusion. A combination of their blood with the toxins of rare toads produces a debilitating hallucinogen. So this gives discouraged to, uh, to our missile attacks, which is very cool indeed. Also, as we play, we will unlock more of these banners, and that's through skills. So we don't have to have these equipped in like an item slot or anything. These are just going to be... Skill points we'll just put into Oxyotl and unlock more ammunitions. All based around the Chaos Gods that he uh, that he's trying to thwart because he'd been in their realms, you see. He got trapped in their realm once, found his way out, and he brought some trinkets with him. He brought some souvenirs. So let's uh, let's kill Belger, Woolbreaker, shall we? Alright, so let's have a look at Troglodon. Hey buddy! I'm more excited about the Troglodon than than Oxyotl, I'm sorry. He's so cool. So the beautiful thing about the Skink Oracle, he's always he's always plastered to that thing. He's always on a troglodon, but he's also a spellcaster. So what you've got is an amazing, like, anti-large, armor-piercing missile lizard with huge weapon strength, a uh, good charge bonus, good hit-and-run unit, and actually pretty good melee attack and defense for, like, a missile uh, troop. And he's super quick at 83 speed. So just this amazing ambushing unit that can just turn up out of the blue just nab someone and run off again. Or you can have him hang back and start blasting fireballs around. He's awesome. I love him. He's my favorite boy. Also, uh, Oxyotl's cool, I guess. He's fun. Hello, Oxyotl. Hey, my boy. So he's fun. Bit sneaky. Uh, honestly, I find he's not the most interesting in battle. Like, at times, fine. You know, if there's, like, flying enemies or something, he can do some mad damage. He's got some good missile strength. He can really help supplement things. But generally, he's just a fantastic support character. I find it's all of his campaign stuff. And um, just the fact that he has all these great buffs for uh, for skinks and things. And uh, we have some Saurus here too. They're not skinks, but they're still fine. <laughs> they're still useful for fighting off the wolves. But uh, yeah, absolutely fantastic. I think uh, just his bonuses make him worth having as a lord. But he himself, I don't know, he's fine. Just nothing fancy, you know, but he's just a skink. Also, Chameleon Stalkers. So these guys obviously look fantastic. And their campaign mechanics... Are, well, not campaign mechanics. Their battle mechanics are fantastic. They have what is called Precursor Weapons. Which is a mechanic that hasn't been in Total War Warhammer 2 before. Or Warhammer 1. It hasn't been in the series. But it has been in Rome. And uh, other titles, I think. Basically means if I tell them to attack someone, they're going to use their missile attacks as they charge in. And so you see they have two ammunition, 80 missile strength. Which is a pretty hefty missile strength. And, uh, yeah, they shoot these explosive darts before running in and starting clubbing people. So they're like Hestati. They're really cool. Really nice addition. So, uh, I guess, yeah, you guys can hang back for a bit. And we'll work out who we are going to target. Also, Oxyotl starts with Master Predator, which doesn't sound like much of a boast. <laughs> Depending on the context. Anyway, plus 20 range is really useful. It will slow him down, but he gets snipe and unspottable. So people are going to be dying and they won't know why. So that's pretty useful. Okay, come on you. Let's get you all lined up. And let's get you stuck in. Also, I do have uh, I do have a troglodon who can shoot fireballs. So let's do that. Also, it doesn't say specifically, but he can fire while moving. And also what's really great is having a spellcaster on a, on a platform like that, where he's nice and tall. Well, he's nice and tall, isn't he? I mean, that's really it. That's 
as far as that goes. He's just very tall, and that's a good thing. So that's a little bit of a bother. Okay, come on, boys. So it looks like these uh, Marauder Hunters have already taken a huge amount of damage. Okay, how's everyone doing? So I'm actually going to send in my uh, Chameleon Stalkers back here. And we're going to... Yeah, we can already see they are using their little blowpipes. Which is something that they... I must say, they are a little bit funny about using it. Sometimes they're happy to use it. Sometimes they just sort of don't shoot anyone. And it can be quite a nuisance trying to work out why. Um, it can be a little inconsistent. Though I think there has been a patch since I last uh, tested out this campaign. So I think it is slightly improved. So I wouldn't worry too much. But... Uh, yeah, pretty great though, these explosive rounds. Look at just chasing. Just really knackering those dogs. Sorry, pups. Sorry, puppers. Okay, let's charge in with you. You guys can run back. And let's keep chasing these guys. And I guess you can keep attacking those mammoths. And uh, here we go. Good little charge. And just decent charge bonus with the trundle done, you know? Ooh, love it. Go on, get him again. Excellent. Excellent. So he's awesome. I love the Troglodon. And, oh, we haven't won yet. Yeah, when he broke, I assumed it was army losses. He's just scared of the giant Troglodon. I don't blame him, honestly. I don't blame him. So there we have it. There we have it. First victory. I mean, we took out a flipping mammoth. I mean, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. Decisive victory. So there goes our first enemy. Uh, we are going to... I think I'll kill and eat. Atta boy. Terrific. So he's down. We've got Sword of Anti-Heroes. That's not that useful, I'm going to be honest. Yeah, that's not very useful for Oxyotl. Like, he shouldn't be in melee at all. I'm going to give it to our Skink Oracle. Here you go. That will help him a lot more. Uh, also, skills. I'm going to increase mobility. And for Oxyotl... I'm going to increase mobility with Root Marcher. I want to be able to really just get get where I'm going as quickly as possible, guys. That's the plan. Uh, also, speaking of getting where I'm going, I want to make sure that we build nice and tall. So I'm going to go with the Skink Foraging Camps nice and early. Uh, also, I'm going to make sure he goes the shortest route. So I'm going to tell him to attack Shagrath. And before he leaves our territory, I'm going to hit backspace so he stops. And now, let's get him some more toys. Let's get him some Chameleon Stalkers. Apparently only the one unit. Is it worth giving up? You know what? It is. It is. It's worth giving up a turn for that, I think. I still can't afford it. You know what? It's not worth giving up a turn for that. Let's let's just go ahead. Let's go ahead and do that. We don't need that big an army. We're about to, we're about to get a Skink uh, Chief in here too, so it's all good. Excellent news. All right. Research available. Uh, so what is nice, you do start with these first two uh, researches done. So your skinks are just better from the get-go as well. So you've got poison tax for all your skink infantry, extra ammunition, and you've got uh, vanguard for all skink units and additional missile strength for your uh, skinks, chameleon skinks, and chameleon stalkers. I mean, extra 10% missile strength, it doesn't seem like a huge amount, but the chameleon stalkers, they've got like 80 missile strength. It's fantastic. And also, let's put up their weapon strength too. Wonderful. All right, let's crack on. Okay, so we've got one more unit of Stalkers. That'll do, don't worry. Uh, also, I must say, a lot of this territory is uh, is disgusting. It's terrible, awful territory. Also, can you reach? You can reach. Good. Let's get you in. Um, it's awful territory, full of chaos, corruption. And the fact that Oxyotl is often jet-setting across the world, it makes it very difficult to babysit places with chaos, corruption. So although the Palace of Ruin and a couple more territories up here are, you know, right next to our home province... Just burn them down and leave. That's my advice. Or, once you've got walls going, they'll no doubt be occupied by more Norskins. Just leave them to it. You know, they'll occasionally come in. If you put up a Sanctum, you can just you can just basically get a bunch of cash out of it. Because you'll keep getting those ambushing armies ruining their day. So, um, just farm them, I'd say. Farm them. Burn them to the ground if they're bothering you. But don't try and babysit them. It's going to occupy just so much time. And you will not be able to afford a bunch of armies. Because it's quite difficult to build an empire when you're across the world. So that's my bit of advice from the get-go. Um, so, Shagrath. Uh, so, Weivulf Krakenbite. 
Uh, I don't want to lose anyone. And of course, the new auto-resolve mechanics, I can see that I will lose both my Saurus Warriors if I auto-resolve. And I don't want to do that, so we're going to fight this battle. But frankly, any excuse to fight a battle. Alright, here we are again. Uh, so let's get our Saurus Warriors. Good stuff. Let's get our Skinks. I'm going to put them in front. We're going to put our Explosive Boys in the middle. Now uh, we're going to put our Skinks our uh, chameleon skinks on the outside. Put them on skirmish mode, because we're against the AI, so we don't have to do anything clever. And uh Octiotl can't skirmish he can't he can't vanguard yet. Silly. That's the skink, Chief. He can vanguard. I was thinking that. I was like, why can't I? I, I was clicking on the wrong the wrong little skink boy with darts. That's why. Silly me. Anyway, these two, the Oracle and the Skink Chief, both have skills that can give them Vanguard deployment. So we can indeed vanguard all of our army before long. Except, uh, except I guess, the Saurus Warriors, but we'll probably phase them out for something that isn't a Saurus Warrior. Uh, so these Marauder Champions, I don't like their odds against the barrage of various uh, Chaos-tinted missiles that uh, we have at our disposal here. Well, Chaos and Toad-tinted, I suppose. Also, I love the light show. It's so good. I mean, seriously, look at this. It's just awesome. Big fan, guys. Big fan. Uh, anyway, let's get these Marauder Champions, please. Let's just lock your group. Have all you run in. And attack them too. Oh, just Marauders. Boring. Uh, you, you're not going to do it. Go on. Go on. Use your darts. Use your darts, guys. You're not, There we go. Now you're using your darts. Alright, you can charge now. I believe in you. And that's a good start, and I suppose our Saurus Warriors can get involved, but I mean, do they need to? Probably not. Probably not. Alright, you move up a little bit. And you know what? You guys back up again. You still got you still got missiles. So this is the beauty of it. If you just sort of backtrack, they're really nice and quick, so they can run away, hit them with some, some more volleys of the missiles, and you can just charge them back in again. And that just sort of repeated cycle charging. Just having infantry that can cycle charge is a really unique mechanic. Um, so I really love it. I think it's really fun. I think it's rather fun, because it also keeps the enemies occupied. I mean, these two are absolutely crushing Marauder Champions right now, thanks to their missiles. It's a big deal. There you go. Immediately, as, as you start running away, you hit them with the explosives. It just knocks them back. It lets you run away. I mean, look at that. So good. Marauder Champions are no joke. So to be able to do that is really ruddy impressive. Big fan. Big fan of the uh, the Chameleon Stalkers. Thing is, though, they are flimsy as hell. If you just want to sort of, like, set them loose and then leave it, they're going to get murdered to bits. But if you just muck about with them like that, they do great. So, decisive victory. So, yet another really nice thing about the Skink Oracle, by the way, uh, is that because the Troglodon, like, spits its, you know, missile attack while it's moving, if, a u like, an enemy unit breaks... You know, just like a, like an enemy lord on a horse or something. You can keep pace with it. And although usually it's very difficult to actually land an attack when you're pursuing something that's running directly away from you, you don't have to because you're just spitting out his back, which sounds distasteful, but <laughs> go for you know, go for it, guys. Go for it. Um, I'm not here to shame anyone. So yeah, it's really good. Absolutely fantastic. So let's go with... Uh, occupy. Yeah, I I don't I don't think I want to upset public order, because they are going to be upset with me for a while. I think we will be taking this place quickly. Just I would like some extra cash. Is the thing some extra cash would be really nice. Also, we have unlocked the right of Sotek really nice and early, which is amazing if you're playing with like an entirely skink uh, military. Because, uh, oh, and also causing attrition for enemies within your territory. That's really nice, coupled with the random ambushes that you may end up with. Um, but also just all the weapon strength and missile strength, melee attack, all for skink units. It's really powerful. It is really powerful in this campaign. It's expensive, though, at six grand, and we are a little short on cash. All right, now I'm going to go Inspiring Presence. Uh, I hate that I can't upgrade Oxyotl himself, but frankly, I, I just don't see that that's what he's for. Um, I much prefer his sort of support things. So here you can see uh, enemies' weapons and poisons of the warp are the additional ammo types as well. So one has a uh, poison, but it's, it's not like usual poison attacks. It's the damage over time effect, which is really cool. Also, there's the demon bane ammunition, which 
I think is anti-large, I believe, but also magical attacks, which is really nice. Uh, also, you've got the Ancient Knowledge skill, which gives him Sanctum Gems per turn, which means every eight turns, you've got a new Sanctum. That adds up real quick. Uh, also, plus 15% research rate and extra unit experience per turn for the Lord's Army. So, really experienced units by the end of a campaign. Also, uh, this one is nice. Enemy leadership, minus 8 for Warriors of Chaos, Beastmen, and Norska. That means that, you know, just Marauders or Ungors or anything, they're going to run away so quickly under a volley from your Chameleon Skigs. It's fantastic. Also, Untainted, plus 4 in the local province. Help, uh, you know, help sort some things out. Also, Immune to Psychology when fighting um, all of the Chaos armies, which is really good for the whole army, too. Uh, the Hidden Nuisance gives him even better chance of ambushing, but also the entire Lord's army, well, all the Chameleon Stalker units in the Lord's, Ar Lord's army, get unspottable, all Skink units get Stalk, and all Chameleon Skinks get Snipe, which means that they can't be seen, and shooting doesn't reveal them. So they can stay hidden even when they're killing a bunch of stuff, which is balmy. I love it. Also, Explorer of Lost Worlds unlocks recruitment to the Skink Oracle in all provinces, so if you need a replacement, or you just want a, an additional one, you can do that anyway, which is really nice. Uh, also, upkeep, minus 15% for Troglodons, Coatls, brand new unit, and Skink Oracle units. So, I mean, this is fine, but we're probably not going to have a lot of them here, but the other bonuses are good too, because you get missile resistance for Troglodons, Coatls, and Skink Oracle units. Also, behind enemy lines gives you casualty replenishment rate, uh, yeah, that's right. Casualty replenishment rate. I said it and it sounded wrong. But anyway, in enemy territory, which is a big deal to be able to recover in enemy territory. Also, missile damage plus 10% when in foreign territory. So every time you attack an enemy settlement, you've got that 10% missile damage for your whole army. Extra global recruitment capacity so you can recruit, you know, on the move. And plus 8 melee attack for the whole army when you're in foreign territory. So really proactive boy. Huge bonuses. And then finally, the Long Revenge, which uh, I'm glad this isn't something in, like, multiplayer, because this is just, ah, oh, it's just the most kitey nonsense. So 15% bonus campaign movement range for the Lord's Army, which is really good, plus 50% ammunition for all Skink Infantry. That includes an extra um, explosive blowpipe dart for the uh, Chameleon Stalkers. So that's a huge amount of additional damage just from that. Also, Vigor Loss Reduction, minus 50% for all Skink and Chameleon Skink Infantry units, and Perfect Vigor for Oxyotl. And for some reason, ranged attacks tire units out quicker than being in melee, so Oxyotl tends to get quite tired quite quickly. So him getting Perfect Vigor means you don't have to worry about that. If he does get caught in melee, he's not going to already be exhausted. So, pretty good. Pretty good stuff. Pretty good stuff. No mount option or anything, though. Not sneaky enough. Although, the Skink Oracle manages it. So, Fireball. So what's really nice with the Skink Oracle? Uh, telepathic Connection is a really fun one. Gives you a free Comet of Cassandora. But, because you're acting as a conduit for the for a Slan Mage Priest, you know, so somewhere off-screen, presumably, um, it, uh, it hurts, basically. It hurts. It's not something that you're casting. It's someone who's doing it through you. Um, so you, you suffer damage for the benefit, but it doesn't matter too much because you've got Earth Blood, so you can just heal yourself up again, which is awesome. Uh, also, Gorilla Fighter and Natural Camouflage means he doesn't only get Vanguard, but also Stalk, so he'll be invisible until he pounces, which is sick. Also, Wisson's Wild, uh, Wild Form, Fireball, Earth Blood, Harmonic Convergence, Flock of Doom, Wind Blast are all awesome spells. He also gets Life Bloom and Wild Heart, so additional magic every time you cast, and it heals everyone every time you cast. And then Earthing and Magical Reserves. No Arcane Conduit because he's he's not one of the... They're not one of the best spell casters in the world. They're just good and multi-purpose. And uh, multi-purpose they are because if you go down the melee tree to, you know, give Venomous Spit and all the rest of it, uh, you can get Primeval Roar, which is essentially uh, fight or die for your local, you know, for people around you. So it's plus 24 melee attack. That's a big deal. And it recharges in melee, so it does require some sort of uh, proactive, um, you know, effort, I suppose, for uh, for your oracle. But still, that's a huge buff. Also, Swiftness of Itzel. So if you do get caught in, in a trap and you want to be able to leave, you can use Swiftness of Itzel, which is a little explosion that just knocks everyone away. And uh, he's very quick, so he can run off and that plus 25 speed. Yeah, that'll give him around 100 speed. I'm sure if you get a bit of fleet-footed as well, you can get him way over 100 speed with that to run off with. So, really cool stuff. Really cool stuff indeed. Oh, and a Skink Chief is... He's a Skink Chief, isn't he? Like, eventually Ancient Stegodon. So, fine. Uh, I think I'm going to go with the Replenished Troops for him first off. 
We're not really in any need of anything else just yet. Uh, I'm going to get the insect breeding farm, I think. Or do I just need to get some units? I feel like I just really need to get some units in here. So let's do that, and I'm going to get another skink cohort with javelins. So we got four javelins, four chameleon stalkers, and then we'll presumably get some other stuff. Let's crack on. All right, so let's head over to uh, to Nagra. Nagra. Let's head over to Nagra. And are you going to be in your territory, or are you going to be just outside your territory? I'm just going to stop there, just in case. Good boy. So, we are really running out of money fast. <laughs> so quickly. Uh, let's get a... You know what? Let's not get anything. You know what? That army's fine. That army's fine. We don't need a bigger army. Let's go with growth. I need to, I need to get this place, this area, big and strong as quick as I can. Because we're going to need it to be able to hold its own. We, we're going to need to get a bunch of... Um, uh, sort of fortifications, all the garrison buildings, all the rest of it, to make sure it can look after itself while we jet set. Not that we're jet setting yet, but we'll need it. Okay, let's get Ermagird! Ermagird, Black Raider! Let's go get him. Hey, boy. And high casualties, Pyrrhic victory, or we could fight it ourselves and lose like two guys, I reckon. Uh, let's give that a go. All right, this place uh, sucks. It's horrible. It's so it's so smoggy. It's horrible. You can definitely tell chaos has been about. This won't do at all. Okay, come here, you. Everybody gets stuck in. Uh, I'm gonna put you guys on the edges. Uh, oh, you can't you can't vanguard yet. No worries. No worries, guys. No worries. Let's immediately give you the bonus range. And let's have you start throwing fireballs with immediate effect. And let's have everyone else get stuck in. I'm going to put you on skirmish mode. And uh, sadly, you can't put the chameleon stalkers on skirmish mode. But putting them on skirmish mode initially until they throw all their explosive shots would actually be really cool. It would be really rather nice. So, I'm a bit sad here that we don't have wind blast unlocked yet. I must say, that is that is disappointing. That is very disappointing. But luckily we have fireballs instead. Is that a... That's just a marauder. Boring. Boring. Okay, you're going to throw... You are going to do it. Good. Good stuff. Okay, go for the marauder. Uh, berserkers, please. You guys are going to be the most dangerous. And I'm actually going to double back into them. Even though I'll take some damage, it doesn't matter. Now, one of those marauder champions that have taken just... Horrific damage already. Okay, come on, guys. You know what? They're already totally knackered. That's fantastic. Okay, charge into them, please. I guess I'll go for those spearmen, because I think we'll get a good shot through there. So, firing in, and, yep, chomping down on everybody. Fantastic. Fantastic. So, those hounds have had a terrible day. Let's get you guys involved. I'm actually tell you to attack the Marauder Hunters. I want to get in nice and close. I suppose Saurus Warriors can get involved too, but... <laughs> Do we even need to? <laughs> I'd say we're doing quite well. Alright, another fireball over here, please. And, yep. Doing great over here. Yep, doing fantastically. I think that's going to be it, then. Good stuff. Although those Marauders are still going somehow. Wow! Wow, those Marauder Champions haven't been touched. I should probably do something about that, huh? Okay, let's go attack them. And, oh no, units have used all their ammunition. We'll live, I'm sure. Okay, this is actually going very well. Good. You guys, just always a godsend. There we have it. Jobs are good. And Susie, Marauder Champions just melt under this Chameleon Stalker fire. They're such good value. Except they do often just shoot, like, the wrong guys. Like, I don't care about this Marauder Spearman. Like, shoot the really expensive enemy units, please. I mean, it doesn't matter. It's a siege battle, so everything's dead anyway, but... It just, it just it, you know, I want them to get some practice in attacking things that are worth attacking. Fantastic. So, I, I did think that one of our skink cohorts had taken a bunch of damage, <laughs> but you can't really tell. So, we only all 76 units. It's pretty great. Uh, it's a strong army, guys. It is a strong army. Oxyotls. They do very, very well. That's why I said, like, he's not the strongest himself. 
but god like his army is, is capable as hell so let's take this over right of ferocity like we're never gonna be able to afford the upkeep on a bunch of on a stack of dinosaurs so good luck ever managing to use that it's gonna take a long time although what would be nice is to head over this way because grond has a gold mine so i would like to get rid of hellebron before she confederates with uh with malekith and you know he takes over the whole world because he, he does do that a lot doesn't he he does tend to do that uh so oxyotl skirmisher so we can make our skinks even better Hardly seems fair, but here we are. Um, stimulate growth would actually be pretty good while we're here. But we're going to be... I mean, we will actually teleport back home fairly often. So this might be worth getting. Though I think it'd be upsetting not to get Windblast. Because next time we see a big crowd of Norskins like we had there, just hitting them with Windblast would be lovely. Flock of Doom's great too. And Earthblood eventually, but we're just not taking enough damage for this to be worthwhile yet. I know. It's saying something, isn't it? Um, for you, I guess... I mean, boost income would be nice too, but no, it does death. We'll we'll start upgrading him. I want to get to you know jungle toxins, slippery. Yeah, we'll just we'll just move him down here. I want to make sure that by the time he's uh, on a pterodon, we will be getting the pterodon. By the way, it makes him a really good sniper for sort of dealing with enemy spellcasters and things. Or just lords, we can just say go attack that and leave him to it, um, and then we'll skip the stegodon and we'll get the ancient stegodon. But I don't want eleven more turns of him just walking around. It's just not useful enough. So we will be getting the pterodon. But I want to make sure that he's, he's got good missile damage before he's on the pterodon, so we can make best use out of it. So, I think that's it for the turn. No, it isn't. We should probably recruit something. Even though our income is rubbish. <laughs> it's really bad. Uh, let's get a couple more chameleon skinks. So we have one per ammo type. That's the model that I'm sticking to. And let's see. I mean, just more chameleon skinks would be good. More chameleon stalkers, rather. Um, but just skink cohorts with javelins are also very capable. So let's get them. They're a tiny bit cheaper. They're a tiny bit cheaper. So, there's nothing else we can really build. That's just ports. So that's made uh, building decisions very easy. Let's crack on. And then finally to Dargoth. And I suppose uh, Nagra can be upgraded. And hello, Crone Hellebron. What are you doing? Uh, don't call me a handed priestess and don't say bloody. Um, so I'm going to go attack Dargoth, and then I think we might declare war on Crone Halibron. We will get given a bunch of missions once we've done this, but we will have a few turns to do those missions, so maybe we'll be able to fit in a little war, <laughs> you know? Maybe. We'll see. We'll have to play it by ear. So, uh, Vali and, uh, uh, Hrothrax. Fun name. Uh, I feel like we can actually just auto-resolve auto this. Casualty's going to be low. Not that low, actually. But it'll do. Okay, now Dargroth. Here comes a... Uh... Ooh, that could be good. Getting a bit of extra cash from the Obsidian Quarry. Or I could just get Skink Foraging Camp. But, I mean, if I don't earn some money... Uh, or get some trade goods... Because that's the thing, we will meet a lot of people as we're flying around the map. So we will have a lot of opportunities to trade with people that we otherwise wouldn't have probably met. So getting some trade goods isn't a bad idea. And uh, just having some extra money, so that way when we do have the growth, you know, the population surplus to be able to upgrade anywhere, we'll actually be able to afford it. You know, that's that's my main worry at the moment, is we're going to be broke. Okay, so, uh, province secured, which is fantastic. Destroyed crag, and a new sanctum is available, because we did the Visions of the Old Ones quest. So you'll see, we now have a sanctum. So this is how we make sanctums. So we click on a place, and then we click the tick to confirm that that's where we want it, which is very straightforward. Uh, though I don't know if we'll... You know what? Screw it. We're going to put in Shagrath straight away, just in case these guys decide they can declare war on us. Although I could actually put it in their own territory, so they get hit by it every time they try and leave, and it means that we'll have line of sight on them. Uh, although if I put in Shagrath, if something comes from the sea, then I'll also ambush them. So maybe I'll put it in my own territory. It's probably safer, isn't it? It's probably safer. Let's do that. So, maybe it's wasteful, building a couple of sanctums right next to each other. But also, uh, I don't really care. <laughs> we will get loads of these, so don't you worry. Uh, so, we are going to get the excavated chamber of Huanchi. Also, there are these buildings I didn't talk about either. So, these are the armory buildings. So, you get the restored glyph wall of uh, Zkatli. 
don't know how to pronounce that. It's fine. So it gives bonus weapon strength, charge bonus melee attack. Uh, this one gives extra missile strength and ammunition, and this one gives extra missile resistance and armor and melee defense. You can only build one of these. You have to choose one. And it obviously just does local army buffs. But these will apply to our ambush armies, which is really rather nice. So uh, I think um, the restored glyph wall of Sotek is probably our best bet. And I will build it now, just so we can see the benefits. Also, the unearthed sanctum, so this bottom building, is in every sanctum. Okay, you'll see. It's in all of them. So you either have the normal one, which grants visibility over the region, or you can upgrade it, and it gives you visibility over adjacent regions as well. It's a little bit more expensive, but can be very beneficial. And the main the main thing with these um, sanctums is I'm going to want to litter uh, the areas where the Chaos Invasion is going to be coming in. So that way, as the Chaos Invasion comes in, all of those stacks of Chaos will just keep getting ambushed. As I'll be able to whittle them down a bunch. It should be really fun. So I'm looking forward to that. But that's what we're going to want Sanctums for mostly, is to sort of, you know, plan ahead like that. So, Skirmisher, and for the Oracle, let's get... Yeah, Earthblood's probably a good shout, isn't it? Or oh, increase mobility some more. Ooh, I'll wait. I'll wait on that. Let's unlock some more spells. I'm going to get Flock of Doom. I don't think we need the healing. I know, healing's great, but, like, we just don't need it. If we just kill things quicker, that, that'll do. Um, you can't... They, the enemies can't attack us if they're dead, you know? They can't damage us if they're dead, and then we won't need the healing because we won't get damaged because they're dead. So, piercing shots. Let's go with piercing shots. Good. And that will benefit the um, ancient Stegodon as well, because it does have the, like, blowpipe machine gun on the top of it, which is awesome. So we do have a commandment available. Let's go ahead and get alignment of crafting, so get a bit of extra income, uh, lower growth and some extra... Pub uh, sorry, higher growth and extra public order. Uh, also what's handy here is remember we did build uh, this building which does lower upkeep for adjacent regions as well so that's very handy so that means that Oxyotl is actually costing us less but as soon as we run over here to deal with Helebron we are going to have less money that's another reason why I'm concerned we will suddenly be broke and it'll come out of nowhere Golden Blowpipe of Patui Cool. We just have to win a battle against Norska. That'll be easy enough. So Oxyotl's torturous past spent in the Chaos Realm left him both scared... Not scared, scarred. I wasn't scared at all. He's a brave boy. Look at him. Look at him, cheeky chappy. Uh, so, he was both scarred and gifted in ways that his kin will never comprehend. Many claim his survival could only have been made possible by powers endowed by the Old Ones themselves, most notably his uncanny ability to anticipate the closeness of the Dark God's minions, despite their efforts to obscure themselves... The Norsekin tribes, however, make no secret of their existence and worship of the ruinous powers, branding themselves with the dread marks and shouting the names of the dark gods as they charge fanatically into battle. Oxyotl senses a growing taint of chaos on the maniacal Northmen, far greater than the sickness they typically exude. Perhaps it is a side effect of fluctuations in the Great Vortex, or maybe something else entirely. In any case, it is a, th a threat he knows must be assessed. To do so, Oxyotl must face the Norskans head on, sooner rather than later. Your prestige grows, my lord. News of your conquests spreads far and wide. Your developing power is noted by even the most distant of kings and bestial lords. Ah, oh, thanks, warm blood. Ah, oh, warm bloods, they can be sweet. Uh, so, unlock a silent sanctum is a chapter objective that we finished. Sadly, we didn't get many bonus objectives. I could have milked that a little bit, but I didn't. And now I'm regretting it, because a bit of extra cash would have been nice. Hmm. Oh well, never mind. So, though the old ones are long dead, their ancient power still beats through the veins of the world. We've read that already. Next up, next chapter objective. So, to win the campaign, we do need to get, uh, for a short victory, we need three chapter objectives. And I think for the long victories, five shouldn't be too difficult. So here, complete three of the following. Visions of the Old Ones, brackets, easy. So the missions we get through the Visions of the Old Ones, they will be of several tiers of difficulty. So um, easy is easy. It's pretty self-explanatory. They haven't, they haven't made it all that cryptic. So the stain of ruination spreads faster than the younger, lesser races can possibly understand, let alone stem. Only Oxyotl can see where darkness makes its roots. Only Oxyotl can contain the horror of chaos before it is too late. That moment is now. Dun dun dun. So let's look at these missions. So we have 
four missions to do. One, destroy, uh, destroy, destroy a Norska settlement. So if we don't manage it, we'll have a minus seven public order penalty for all provinces. That's pretty painful. Uh, but if we succeed in doing it, we get blessed tes uh, blessed pterodon riders. I'm just trying to merge all the words together. There should only be one word, <laughs> okay? It makes things a lot easier. So, blessed pterodon riders with fire leech bowlers. That's so good to have that in the recruitment pool. You know, that's amazing. Uh, like this early on. Also, hunt army. Just give us some more sanctum gems, which means more sanctums. But for that, we need to defeat the following army. Throt the unclean. So that's going to be a little bit more challenging. A lot of consequences, including the chaos invasion will occur sooner. So if you fail a bunch of missions, you can actually have the chaos invasion turn up real early. How cool is that? I love that you're actively trying to stop chaos from, from rising, you know? It's amazing. So you're, you're actively delaying them. Because that's what that really means, isn't it? If you do it, you have delayed them. If they succeed, then the Chaos Invasion will happen sooner. So it's pretty cool. Also, Chaos Invasion will be more powerful if we let this live. And, I mean, the amount of missions that we're going to do or not do over the course of a campaign, the Chaos Invasion could turn out completely differently than it should, you know? Hopefully we'll succeed in all these and it won't be a problem, but oof, could be tough. Also, Mormal Flesh Cutter. Need to kill him too. There's a lot we need to do. We only have seven turns. But currently, I doubt that... Okay, Hargeneth and Black Pillar. Is that all? If that's all, I think I might go get them now. I think I think I may have time. My hatred for your kind boils my blood. Uh, oh, too late. They have a defensive agreement with Nagarond. I think they had that anyway, didn't they? It is usually I don't bother attacking them this early. But usually it's a problem. You know, I've played a couple test campaigns, and I always find that th this area is just too valuable to leave alone. But I usually don't do it until they declare war on me. I was thinking, maybe I'd change that, but... You know what? Let's go jet-setting. Um, it comes with a fun cutscene, which is cool. So, let's deal with Throt the Unclean first. Because it will give us some Sanctum Gems. And if we're able to get some more Sanctum Gems, I really want to put a... Um, in fact, let's zoom to it. Oh, he's over here. Interesting. Interesting. He doesn't have a big army either. Uh, so the fact that we can see help it already, it means that I could just, if I had a Sanctum, I could just put one in help it, put an ambushing army there, and every time any army left help it, there's a chance I could ambush it. So you can just farm so many resources and just hinder your enemies so much by doing that. It's really fun. It's a really cool mechanic. So anyway, we want to teleport over here now. I've decided we're going to go kill Throt. So, those seemingly not in direct thrall to the ruinous gods are not openly harbouring their worshippers. A vision reveals an army infected with a powerful taint of chaos. The younger races are weak, uh, are weak souls who are often susceptible to corruption. But in this case, your instincts tell you this could be a cause for concern. Cutscene. I know, it's just a still, but it's nice. <laughs> it's nice, though. Um, so, I can walk right up to him before declaring war on him. I just don't want this other army to be in the way, you see. And you'll notice they are in the underway stance, so hopefully I'll be able to just wipe them out nicely. So, hi Clan Mulder. Hello. Close victory. Everyone's coming along. Luckily, Throt the Unclean, his army in particular, isn't looking too good. And the fact that I can vanguard means I can be on top of this army before reinforcements arrive. Also, you'll notice mutant rat ogres and wolf rats have had new art. They have new art, including the poison variants as well. So a lot of the DLC units have uh, have had their art revised because the community was asking for, for new art uh, quite fervently. And they've delivered. I've got to say, they're, they're incredibly clear in what the unit is. They're very, like, they communicate very well what they're supposed to be. So I, I'd say it's a great upgrade. So good on them. Good on them for doing that before uh, before moving on to game three. It's really nice to see. So let's, uh, let's attack them. I don't want to lose any units. And I want to fight Throt. I think it'd be good fun. So, as far as the teleporting goes... Yeah, oh, reinforcements are coming there. They're going to be behind me. Which is fine. Oh, whoops. I don't mind them being behind me. Although they won't completely be behind me because my poor Saurus warriors are going to get attacked by wolves. If they die, so be it. Or I guess I could just wait here, kill them, and wait for Throt to turn up later. It's probably better, isn't it? Let's just do that. Let's just do that. I don't need to ambush him. It doesn't matter. Um, also, do I... I feel like if they're coming from this tunnel, and we know they're coming from this tunnel, that this actually feels less cheeky than if you're doing this on an open map. Because, like, we're in a tunnel. It's just a tunnel. 
So blocking a passageway makes a lot more sense than just sort of like putting your entire army against the side of the map. You know what I mean? Like this feels more realistic response to uh, to our enemies spawning here than we would otherwise have. So you know what? I'll spread out the explosive damage. Uh, you guys, I guess I'll just put back here for now. Uh, you can sit on the edge. You guys can't vanguard. And you're also here. Okay, good. That'll do. That'll do. Hello, everyone. Hello, Ark Storm. Mr. Storm. <laughs> Please, Mr. Storm was my father. And they're already really hurt. So this this is not going well for for these Skaven, is it? No, not so much. All right, you guys head over this way, and it really is just one little tunnel, isn't it? Wow, this is just this is just not fair. This is just not fair. <laughs> Do I care? Of course not. I have absolutely no sympathy for for these rats. And in fact, oh oh. Yep. Thought they would. Hi, guys. Hi. Cheeky little sods. Alright. You head over that way. I mean, these guys are coming in just one at a time and being murdered. It's really, um... Hardly seems fair. Don't mind at all. Don't mind at all. I mean, Throt's coming in. He's gonna try and relieve his, um... His boys. Wow, look at the leadership drop. Just immediately. <laughs> I just add a little closer so Terra can uh, can impact them. Guess thing, I'm only here for Throt. Oh, and that mutant rat ogre looks juicy, doesn't he? Hey, boy. Hey. Are you gonna get shot by a billion, a billion poison darts? Yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. And yep, a lot of explosions. Good to see. And, ooh, that, that did not look good for the mutant rat ogre. He's having a very poor time. He's just having the worst time. And this is just a pile of dead rats, huh? Or that... Oh, they are there. I was say, have they broken? No, they're fine. They're fine. Okay. It's because people aren't throwing javelins anymore. Everyone's got a bit confused. Which is okay. You know, it's fine. And yeah, that mutant rat ogre is having just the worst time. Just the worst time. I love it. <laughs> Alright, you guys all move up and around. You guys are doing great, but you're getting a bit murdered, which I'm not happy about. Okay, good. You guys can move up. How are reinforcements still coming through here? Seriously. It's because they're coming in one at a time. It's all very, um, it's all very silly. Okay. Yeah, you guys do great. Alright, maybe you should go that way. Oh. Oh, no, they're shattered. That's everything. Yeah, okay, good. Well, that went okay, didn't it? That went totally fine. Good job. Good job. Uh, so, Throt didn't really take any damage. Oh, there was a rat there. I thought he was really preempting attacking Throt there. But, like, watch how they still, they still attack as they go. It's wonderful. It's just so good. Like, such a good sort of pursuing character, you know? It's wonderful. Love that troglodyte. Love it. Absolutely just adore it. I don't know if you can tell. I'm a fan. Decisive victory. So, that was embarrassing for, uh, for poor Arkstorm the Contagious. But honestly, because they ran away, they did actually make it out with, uh, with a lot more survivors than if they'd fought me um, fairly. So, good for them for running away. Proud of them. So let's kill and eat them, obviously. Bye now. Uh, so, I'd also quite like to see if we can keep these dwarfs going. Because these guys could keep Norska busy for a while. So what I might do as well, as well as putting a um, uh, uh, silent sanctum, that's the one. As well as putting a sanctum on help it. Also put one on Krakadrak. Because if we're at war with all the Norskans, which we soon will be, I'm sure of it. Uh, then any time any Norskans come to attack Krakadrak, there'll be a chance that we will ambush them. And if we can get a, uh, a defensive alliance or anything with Krakadrak, 
then their army should contribute to the ambush. Maybe. We'll see. Could be interesting. Could be cool. Just help tip the balance of a lot of uh, a lot of fights. Uh, like this one. I'm going to come attack Arkstorm again, because screw this guy. Uh, I just auto-resolve that. Bye. Bye, Arkstorm. Brilliant. Wow. Yeah. Get a lot of food out of him. Make good eating, apparently. So, Deep Cleaner, giving us extra hit points, which again, doesn't really matter. Oxyotl shouldn't be getting into fights. So, the blemish of the unclean one stains the world no more. His foul presence having been wiped from existence. I know. I know, buddy. I know exactly what you mean. I don't know what he means. So, pretty good stuff. So, we can't teleport again, because it's, it's strictly once per turn, you see. We've already travelled this turn, but it's once per turn, and we can travel home as well, or to a different mission. And, of course, we're not uh, upsetting anyone, because we don't trespass, because these guys didn't even know that we were here. How cool is that? Also, I'm going to make sure that I'm in this guy's territory, because I'm... Okay, I'm not at war with them. If you're at war with someone, you can't teleport from their territory to somewhere else. Which usually you could resolve that just by burning their, their settlement to the ground and then teleporting. That works quite well. Uh, so, Demon Bane. The ground crystals of Zeech's realm can imbue darts with the power of uh, to pierce any ward and find the weakest point on the most formidable foes. Excellent. More fireworks. Excellent. So, you got another level up, and I didn't realise. Skirmisher, so they'll do even more damage. Perfect. And now, the Oracle... Um, I mean, I could get increased mobility or stimulate growth some more, but... Again, I want more spells. We'll finally get Earthblood, okay? Okay, everyone, you happy now? Good. Uh, piercing shots. Lovely. Just, I just want them on a pterodon. I really do. Another piercing shots. I always just assume it's one level up. <laughs> anyway. Uh, I think that's it for the turn, then. Uh, annoyingly, I have to, I have to go over here, then. Hi. Hi, settlements. How are you guys doing? Fine. Fine. Didn't even need to come over here. Alright, so this latest spawning of Solus Warriors appears to be far more belligerent than any you remember in recent times. Ferocity and resolve are called for when combating the foe, but your forces must also consider the Great Plan's higher purpose and not sacrifice themselves unduly. Will you embrace their vicious nature or order retraining for a more balanced army? Uh, let's actually do attack rather than defend, because hopefully if we're doing our army right then we are going to be just doing a bunch of damage from a distance and then just charging them to finish them off, right? I mean, I'm sure a bunch of our front lines are going to get caught out, but whatever. If they can hit hard, great. So, uh, your fearsome warriors lay into the enemy with gusto, even when it leaves them open to attack. Even losses are part of the great plan and further spawnings are always possible. Well, hopefully. Hopefully. Well, the Skaven don't try and bathe in them. Um, let's get... Dargoth or Shagrath? Let's get Shagrath leveled up. Because if we get attacked over here, I can spawn in and then I can push the advantage and just keep going. Uh, whereas over here, I don't really want to push the advantage, so I'd rather just get this upgraded, put walls on it, and not have to worry about these silly Norskins. Wasting my time. So, let's do that. Also, one thing I want to check, actually. I never put the uh, ambush building. Whoops. I never built the ambush building on this one, which I want to do. I definitely want this. So, if I get attacked from here, then I can still ambush. Or, if someone pushes past Shagrath, then I have two chances to ambush them. It's just a nice, nice safety measure, I think. Uh, cool. Now I need to go over here to my to my army. Hi. Hi, Oxyotl. How you doing, babe? Doing good? Let's see if we can't trade with this guy. We can't. Although he does seem to like that we're at war with Clan Mulder, so... Yes, yes, mate. Yes, yes. Chill. Chillax. As the kids say. Let's travel somewhere else. Uh, destroy a Norskin settlement. Uh, this would speed things up a bit. Uh, in the whole, you know, helping out in the north. There's other things to fight over here. If I go down here, I would like to wipe out Queek. I think that would be very beneficial. And this is Skeggy, isn't it? So you might actually be able to wipe out Skeggy. And we will be neighboured by Hexoatl. So this might not be a bad place to have a little outpost. It's not a bad idea. But, uh, yeah, this is where we're going to go first. We need to get the Altar of Spawns. So you have foreseen a region of Norska that will be a key location for Chaos's advancement into the world. Such a premonition is fortuitous. 
A preemptive strike there may have favourable consequences for the wider struggle against the Dark Gods, or at the very least, give the corruption riddled Norskins a deserved punishment. Hey, Off we go. Uh, so annoyingly, that's... I was kind of hoping it would have me attack Throg. So in one of my test campaigns, and not in the other, sadly, in, in the first test campaign I played, it had I had two missions. One was to kill Throg, one was to kill Wolfric. And so I just wiped out both the main Norskin factions within the first, like, ten turns. It was amazing. Like, it was such a boon early on. But, uh, like I said, the missions are random. It doesn't always happen that way. Then I guess within the first ten turns, you could always just... You know, if you wanted to... If you're trying to speed run it, I guess. You could just try it a few times. See what happens. Um, you know, still early days. I mean, God, we've been doing this an hour. And that's with me explaining everything. So, uh, we don't need to fight this. We're fine. Bye now. And let's... I'm not going to occupy it, because it's just... Oh, should I? Should I just take it, get a bit of cash from the... I could just take it, get a bit of cash from the port, and just let it get taken again by someone else. It might even encourage other Norskins to declare war on me, which I'm totally fine with. So, let's just occupy it. Ooh, hello there. So, we did the mission to destroy um, a Norskin settlement, or occupy one. Um, and so that's furthered our quest. So upon defeating the Norskan warband, Oxyotl felt the powerful traces of chaos infecting them to subside. To his dismay, he also learned of a chaos-saturated artifact that had recently been passed on to another Norskan tribe, and no doubt the source of the heightened chaos taint that he had detected. The relic originated from a group of Dark Elf slave traders of Grond, one of the northernmost cities of Nagarond. And what we want, it's got a gold mine, I believe. Um, and a place of fell magic in close proximity to the Chaos Wastes. Oxyotl must decide whether to pursue the Chaos Souls now, or destroy the Dark Elf traders infected by the Taint first, before they involve themselves in further dealings and infect others. So we have the option to um, just immediately do the quest battle, knowing that the enemy will have reinforcements, or we could do it later, uh, and they won't have reinforcements. So I'm going to pursue the source. Um, I think we want to, because if someone's trading in artifacts, they probably have lots of them. So I think we want to stem the flow of that, um, because we're always going to be able to track down that one artifact. But if I were to go down in a million different directions, that seems strategically disadvantageous. So let's go with the uh, the source. If there is any chance that the Dark Elf traders are in the business of trading Chaos artifacts, they must be stopped immediately. Ruins end. Dark, corrupting evil forces have no place here. So extra leadership when fighting against Warriors of Chaos and Norska. And Dweezman. Killed a person. And now... Uh, oh, this is the mission we just did. So we've got some blessed Pterodon riders uh, that we can recruit. That is a big deal. And now we have a new quest on the quest line of the Golden Blowpipe of Patui. I love that it's called the Golden Blowpipe of Patui. I'm a big fan of a lot of things in this campaign. That's that's one of the things. The other thing is the Troglodon. I don't know if I'd mentioned that. Uh, Oxyotl realises that before he goes after those currently in possession of the Chaos Artifact, the ones complicit in its supply must be stopped. Ascertaining the Dark Elf slave traders have envoys within most Nagarothi hosts, he deduces that defeating them and assassinating the embedded traders would send a very clear message to the handling of... Uh, sorry, a very clear message that the handling of Chaos-tainted goods is not a business venture. That they, or anyone should be indulging in. The punishment shall be death. Cool. That gives us an extra three grand, which sounds good to me. Although we have a lot of money right now, but terrible income. So this is the issue that I that I have in this campaign. You will have a lot of money, but not for very long. As soon as some of our buildings get upgraded, that's going to go into turn. So uh, Gorilla Fighter for our Oracle sounds fantastic. And do I want to get a couple of blessed... Pterodon Rider Fire Leech Bowlers now? I mean, the answer is obviously yes, but should I? Yes. It's obviously the answer. And we also have the Right of Primeval Glory. Hang on a minute, didn't we already unlock that? Oh, sorry, the Right of Ferocity I thought was the Right of Primeval Glory. Yeah, that's... I'm sure someone's already yelled at me. It's fine. Uh, don't have the Right of Awakening yet, though. That's fine. Hang on, how's that? Right on unlock after owning 20 units. Really? Don't have 20 units yet. Well, I mean, I do now. Should unlock next turn, right? Presumably. Unless it means 20 units and heroes and... I don't know. I don't know. I've never thought about it. It's never something I strive for. So, <laughs> whatever. So, we're just going to sit there for now. We are running an extra 200 per turn. And, I mean, it's not going to last long, honestly, before it, you know, rebels. But it's just a few extra turns with an extra 200 quid per turn. It's 
you know, it's just a nice cheeky, cheeky better fit. And if it falls to chaos or, you know, a rebel army turns up and then burns it to the ground, so be it. I was going to burn it to the ground anyway. So, Tablet of Spawning. I guess we'll just go all the way over there because that's the only technology I have unlocked, so it'll do. Moving on. And so, of course, this this would happen, though the uh, the Agol tribe. You're a pretender. I'm not a pretender, you're a pretender. Uh, so they've decided to declare war on us, which is a bit annoying because we don't really have any defences yet. Uh, although I think Frozen City could probably fight off Hell of the Farsighted, though they are recruiting. So just three more units and that might be a struggle. Like genuinely could be a struggle. Um, so unfortunately, we'll head back over here and, uh, oh, level up, huh? Gorilla fighter, good. Everyone's a gorilla now. You are going to have to teleport home. Hopefully we can wrap this up before we, uh, we run out of time for the other missions. Good, we went and did the other missions now, right? Because I would have been, I would have been elbow deep in Nagarothi territory, and uh, and then these guys would have declared war on me and eaten up even more of my time. So what I can do is destroy the palace of ruin now, and hope that this gets ambushed before they take Shagrath. So one thing that is really nice that I, I'm a big, big fan of is that um, the sanctums they stick around; they never go because no one ever finds them. Uh, well, actually, I say that. There are certain missions where sometimes they are under attack and your mission is to, you know, teleport over there and, and sort out uh, the army that's attacking it. That's like a, a quest objective, basically. Um, but just any any random army as part of, like, the usual sandbox, they could burn Shagrath to the ground. This will still be here. So, uh, actually... Actually, now I'm wondering, actually, if it is burnt down, if that does affect it. If it is occupied, it's still there. I know that much. Um, they do stick around. They're, you, they're good like that. But uh, I would quite like to upgrade this so I have a better chance of at the ambush. I'm a bit sad that I didn't have that already. Here too. Here too. So let's get those. They're only two grand. So it's three grand total to get both the upgrades. So we're going to burn this to the ground. I'm not going to bother occupying it or anything. I am just going to... Really? Really? We're going to lose... We're going to lose a skink. Uh, chief. From this. I guess we're attacking it then. How very silly. Alright, so. Oh, another really fun thing with the uh, Sanctum defense uh, missions is it's a little node that you sort of walk over, much like you do with um, the uh, the new ogre mechanic. You know, the ogre camps, also Gulptrek and Felix. And you just sort of walk over the node and it enacts the event uh, to do the mission. And uh, what's really fun is the battle is always an ambush, which is really cool. Battle's always an ambush battle. Yeah, let's all go over there, shall we? Uh, you guys hang out in the woods a bit. And... Oh, I don't know. More of you there, I suppose, because you're not actually a frontline unit. Good. That'll do. Not even bothering to group anything. No point. Okay, everyone move up a bit. Everybody attack. Everybody attack. You lot, start swinging in. Okay, excellent. Let's get a flock of doom on these guys, because, well, there's a lot of them. Okay, good. Let's also get... Okay. One of these. And let's charge in. Wonderful. And, oh, I don't know. Let's throw a fireball over there. It's probably the worst place to put a fireball, but that's okay. Let's also make sure we get our drop rocks dropped. Oh, that's going to really upset them, isn't it? It really is. Oh, that's definitely upset them. Okay, good. Um... You know what? I think you guys could probably move over here. Okay, you're still chasing someone over there, huh? That's a mistake. I should pay more attention. Okay, so you've still got your rocks. Let's move you over here. And let's crush these boys. Yeah, that'll do. Good enough for me. Guys, keep moving. This is going great. 
Big fan. Uh, you run over this way. Okay, come on, boy. Let's get a fireball along here. Hopefully it'll go straight through. And, oh, there's more of the champions. No wonder. No wonder. Ooh, okay, that's a problem too, huh? Oh, you guys probably get stuck in. Silly me. Being complacent. That's what happens when your entire army is sort of a skirmisher, but also not really. Everything's a hybrid unit. This is going to be what's going to happen with uh, Kislev, I'm sure. That's like have every single unit trying to get the most out of it and just go, oh, I'm neglecting everything else now. Oh, they're about to break. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good, guys. Wonderful. Oh, so cool. The fireworks from these guys are so good. Hey, just look at this. It's amazing. It's just, it's just exciting stuff. I love it. I just love, like, visually interesting things in a game like this. Just visually interesting effects. And it's really, like, it communicates exactly what's going on. It's fantastic. I like these as well. Ah, oh, we've got a fun army, guys. We have a fun army. Decisive victory. Crushed it. So, we're going to raise it to the ground, because... I haven't got time for this nonsense. Yeah. Uh, biting blade. Extra armor piercing damage for Oxyotl. Yay. Completely pointless. Um, and confident attacker. That, that'll, that'll do. That's all fine. Not enjoying this, though. This is a problem. This is a problem. But we do have another chance to ambush them, I think. I think it's per turn. I'm really not sure. I'm really not sure the exact rules. I'm not sure if it's when they enter the territory or, like, I don't know. I have no idea. But if we lose Shagrath, it's going to be annoying, but we can always go and retake it. It's fine. And then burn down their homes. You know, the usual. Uh, let's go with Swift Rider, because we did just get Pterodon Riders and uh, Coatles and Cold One uh, units we might end up with as well, because if we get any Horned Ones, I'd quite like to add them to the army. I think that'd be quite cool, because we'll probably get some Blessed Ones at some point as a reward. I hope so, anyway. But, you know, they are in the list of rewards we can get. Okay, let's go with Increase Mobility, because we might have to run all the way over here in a minute. And Nagra. Trade goods are great, but defending the place is also great. So let's try and make sure we don't lose Nagra, especially on the coast. Like, I imagine a bunch of upset elves or Norskins and things will be coming at us from the coast. I do want that whale carcass. I bet there's some juicy goods in there. All right. Let's hit and turn and get attacked then. Oh, we got attacked. And there's no hope. There's no hope. I just have to take... I just have to hope that he occupies it. Ah, good. I know it still seems annoying, but if he'd burnt it to the ground, it would have ruined... You know, it would have sort of uh, ruined more of our progress than otherwise. So one thing I can do is, uh, with only 10 movement speed, I can set up an ambush with Oxyotl. So that's good. Uh, the the Nagel Farlings and Wintertooth have confederated, which is annoying. Uh, no, it's not. Wintertooth was the one that got confederated. That's super weird. That is really weird. All right, fair enough, mate. Fair enough. Throg apparently got more beaten up than one of the one of the guys that I burnt down their capital. I don't understand what happened there. That's very weird. Uh, so winds of magic change. Yeah, fine. Fine by me. And, uh, yeah, province contested. So annoying. So annoying. Uh, Dargoth, we can build. And Shagrath, you'll notice, we still have our, uh, whatchamajig. So as soon as this guy leaves, there's a chance he'll get ambushed before Oxyotl even ambushes him. So, fingers crossed, I'll actually be able to show you one of these this episode. That would be great. Uh, <laughs> that's pretty funny. Uh, so we, we've ambushed this one dude. This one dude turned up in our territory and got ambushed. So this is one of the ambushing armies. Just the, a minor ambushing army. We don't have the better building. So it, it raises your chance and it gives you a slightly better army. But it tends to give you a bunch of skirmishes and things. So you can usually do some pretty good work with these armies. Um, especially if they're just moving troops from one settlement to another. You can catch out a bunch of enemies. 
And you'll notice, now that we've destroyed it, or maybe not. Maybe we won't be able to see an example of it. But we get some extra money from it. And now the Hellspire tribe declared war. Of course they have. Of course they have. That's how they roll. Ultra Thorns got attacked by Lamont Dahl. Uh, not to be confused with Raul Dahl. Different person. Different person. This guy did not write the screenplay to You Only Live Twice. Take it, mate. You go ahead. I'm glad I inconvenienced you. Okay, so... That's the guy we defeated. And um, the other guy ran off, which is very annoying. Another mission issued. Uh, raise or sack the following number of settlements. Well, I don't want to sack this one. So uh, we won't be doing that. But this is very annoying. This is this is wasting time that I need to spend on missions so that chaos doesn't turn up and do terrible things to my body. Okay, so uh, oh, I mean we've got we got a one in three chance of ambushing that army if it comes back. And ooh, poisons of the warp. Yes, please. Slow death effect, please. <laughs> Love a good slow death effect. Terrific. Now I'm going to tell me exactly what that does. Apparently not. Because, um, yeah, the ammo types have other effects on top of the specific thing it tells you. Um, right, let's go with... Uh... Oh, I don't know. We don't have Wizards Wild form or Harmonic Convergence yet. Harmonic Convergence is pretty good, though, if we just want to make sure um, we got, like, if we're att being attacked by Berserkers or something. And we just want to make sure we're withstanding the attacks. That's not a bad shout. And for you... Two more levels I can put you on a pterodon. Can't wait. Let's get you replenished troops. I know, I need to keep going that way, but I, I want to make sure we've got replenishment, because, well, we're missing replenishment right now. So what we're going to do, we're going to wait here for one more turn. And then we're going to teleport. And only we kind of need to teleport there first. I'd like to go there first, though. But I guess we'll teleport over here, fight Clan Moors. It's just I'd like to end over here, because I'd like to wipe out Clan Moors. And the chance of them only having one settlement is pretty slim. But the chances of of uh, Skeggy only having the one is pretty high. Yeah. But unfortunately, we have longer to attack here, so... It's sort of a good idea to get rid of the earlier one first. Well, alright. That's just going to be it then, isn't it? We're just going to end the turn. And just hope for the best. I hope we get that... That... Uh, 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 Ambush. That's the word I'm looking for. I hope we get that ambush. But I doubt they'll try and attack us while Oxyotl sat there. Hey, the little guy ran off. So yeah, nothing. Nothing doing. Nothing doing. Hellspire tribe's on his way, though. Ugh. Yeah, we're going to need another army, I think. We're going to need another army. Oh, we don't have the money. I mean, we have some money. And we're about to take Skeggy, probably, so... Yeah, it's not a problem. Uh, so we're going to go over here first. And then kill them, I suppose. We're going to kill Mormal. We're going to go kill Mormal. Let's go have a look at him. Okay, so we sat here. So actually, it does look like they might only have the one territory. We might end up having to fight Queek here as well, which would be mental. So that's fun. I feel like, I feel like Lightning Strike might be something that we'll try and get at some point. I don't often go down the blue line, but I think we'll need... Lightning strike, so we don't have to fight, you know, entire factions all in one go. Although that is a lot of fun, so maybe I won't, just to make it more difficult for myself and more entertaining for you guys. That's not a bad idea. So the threats of chaos appear to you in many guises and not just as those directly enthralled to the ruinous powers. One such corrupted force has been revealed to you, a crucial cog in the Dark God's wider plans that marches in the wake of mass bloodshed and destruction. This army's eradication will be a great boon for the world. I'm sure it will. We get some more Sanctum Gems. Everyone loves Sanctum Gems. Um, 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 delicious. Okay, come here, you. Mormal Flesh Cutter. you got to be able to catch the flesh before you can cut it, mate. Oh, Pyrrhic Victory. And I'm not seeing... Um, I'm, I'm not seeing Queek anywhere. So, Slow Death. Let's give that to uh, you. There we go. Now we have all the colours of the rainbow. All the colours of the Chaos Rainbow. Let's get them. Alright. So I'm a little bit concerned, actually, if Queek's not here. It would be nice to defeat him. And get the, uh, the whatever bonus it is for having defeated him. I'm not sure there is one, actually, now I think about it. 
Is there one? I, I don't know the foggiest. I mean, there is one, but like, is it good? Is it, or is it just some rubbish nonsense? Because some of the bonuses are terrible, you know? Like, does he have one worth getting? I really don't know. All right, you lot, you also line up over here. Let's have the, the little ones flanking like that. And we'll have the Oracle in the middle, because the Oracle is the... He's really the, the good one. He's the one we all care about. And actually, I think I might have them go that way as well. Because you lot are just going to get stuck right in. Okay. Good stuff. Alright, there they are. And this is pretty juicy. And Wind Blast. Such a cool spell. It's the coolest. You know what? I, I'm not going to hit with Fireball. This, this map is too bumpy. Okay, let's just get stuck in. Yeah, they're all running. They're, they're all they're all gone. <laughs> Bless them. <laughs> they tried so hard. All right, you guys line up over here. Oh, 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 it's over here. Sneaky. They're they're gonna be gone straight away. Yeah, they're getting blown up. It's very embarrassing. I'm gonna turn you a fire at will for now. Let's get you up the slope. Oops. Let's get you all over here. Let's get you across the ocean. Uh, all the water effects and everything have been updated, by the way. In this patch. I've noticed water is behaving a lot better than it was. Like, a lot better. Okay. Come on then, boys. Let's get stuck in. So, I mean, Scaven Slope Sliggers are sort of nothing, but... Alright, Clan Rats. There we go. Time to go for you lot. Now I'll get the... Oh, more coming in. Should I get my Saurus Warriors? Probably should, huh? Probably get Oxyotl in here too, honestly. It's just he's not a troglodon, so... It's really easy to forget that he exists. Just, this is a, this is advice for um, any, any Creative Assembly developers watching. Don't release <laughs> any... Any legendary lords, along with a pack that has something as cool as a troglodon in it, because no one's going to pay attention. Just no one's going to pay attention. It's simple as that. Everyone's going to be too focused on the troglodon, because the troglodons are awesome. Okay, new lot. Sort of get you stuck in. That's going well. We are absolutely slaughtering them. Not even fair. How's that? That's Storm Vermin with Halberds. Oh, how fancy are you? Very fancy. That's how fancy. Although I can't quite tell which one they are. I think I think that's the unit. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. Good job, lads. And now you... Oh, they're gone. They're, they're gone. <laughs> Good stuff. Oxyotl, you... No, he's still busy over there. Alright, someone wanna... Go, go help out the boss. Yeah? Go help out the boss. Thanks. Alright, everyone keep moving forwards. But god, just look at this. It's just... Ah, oh, it's wonderful. So good. Yeah, I think the... Uh, it's not just the water effects that seem to have been updated slightly. Um, because they just... There seems to be a lot more polish. I see less errors with water. The shallows actually look like shallows now. Whereas, like, this is deep water. Um, they tend to just be more natural looking. Although still quite fantastical, let's be honest. I mean, look at the colour of that water. It's... Yeah, very fantastical. Um, but yeah, just the, it looks better anyway. The stuff looks updated. But also, I think the lighting has been just generally. Uh, shadows seem to sort of uh, have have a longer range. If you're like underground or something, you don't have that weird thing where the shadows cut off, like really abruptly, like ten foot in front of you, and then the rest of the map is like really well lit, <laughs> sort of incorrectly. You know what I mean? Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but I feel there's been a lot of updates. So stuff they borrowed from Warhammer 3 and put into Warhammer 2 just to make sure that it feels like a more polished product at the end of its lifespan. Because this is the last DLC we're getting, you know? So it's, it's nice that they've given it 
giving it that extra lick of paint. It's, uh, it's appreciated. Decisive victory. Excellent stuff. So, let's, um... Ooh, let's harvest their materials, shall we? Whatever that means. Survival while fighting the Dark Gods requires a pragmatic approach. Uh, so this actually gives us additional ammunition for three turns, which is sick. So I love that. It's just an additional thing that Oxyotl has. Alright, good lad. And uh, because we're at war with them, we're not going to be able to move if I leave this here. So this I'm just going to burn to the ground. Uh, or shall I sack it? I, ha I, I do have a mission to sack somewhere. But I do need it raised so I can actually leave next turn. And I'm on the clock, so... So there we go. Mission successful. We got three more... Sa oh, no, that was for this one. It's the other mission I was thinking of. But we did do this one. We do have more Sanctum Gems. We only need two more and we can uh, get a... Or is it three more? It could be three more. Anyway, no, two more. We need two more. And then we'll have another Sanctum, which is good. Uh, valuable lessons. Get some experience per turn. This is good stuff. Cohort of Sotak unlocked. More more Flesh Cutter got killed. We got a Fan Waver, so more Casualty Replenishment Rate. That is super useful. And this is the one. Yeah. Raise or sack a settlement. So raising it was fine too. And yet we got our blessed skink skirmishes. Brilliant. And we're bold. Charge bonus and leadership. Both pointless for Oxyotl, who's always just going to be stood in the background doing... Patooing, I suppose. Doing patooing. Campaigner. So this is inevitable for Oxyotl, because he's always fighting so far from the capital. So uh, he's a campaigner, because he fought multiple battles very far away from the capital. To the very edge of... Can you shush... To the very edge of the world would this one go. So great is their thirst for adventure, their lust for battle. So really good. He's got perfect vigor already, so we don't need that for that. You know, he's got a he's got a a skill point for that. But that gives him more movement range and all sorts anyway. So it's all good. So there we go. Uh, so this is where we're going to leave it, guys. This is where we're going to leave it for now. Um, but there will be two more episodes out in the next couple of days. Um, I don't know if I'll just put them out in a batch or if it'll be one per day. I don't entirely know what's happening yet because I've got, because um, yeah, this is all. This is um, I've got nothing else running at the moment, so I might just dump it all on you guys. You can enjoy it, and then you have to wait a couple, a couple of uh, days. You got to wait until the ninth. On the ninth, okay, day number nine of uh, this month. Uh, that is when I can post as much stuff as I want. So this campaign will continue, and so will Thorax. So we'll have plenty more content from then on up until uh, release. And yeah, no limits to that embargo. I can I can post to my little heart's content. So we should have a bunch of stuff coming out then. So for now, guys, um, comment, like, subscribe. And remember to hit the bell so you're notified of any new episodes that come out because the schedule will be a little bit irregular because of embargoes. And also, if you want to pre-order this, uh, if you're planning to, then please go over to uh, nexus.gg slash Janet, because I get a kickback from that. I get a bit of money, and it helps the channel out, and it was something you were going to do anyway, so everybody wins, right? Great, thank you. I really appreciate it. Aw, oh, thanks. You're so kind. That's something I would say if you did that. Otherwise, you don't get that. You have to ignore it if you're not going to do it. Yeah, but thanks for watching, though. That I will give you. Brilliant. So, um, yeah, comment, like, subscribe, and... Um, Pet the cats. Bye.